In the conventional models now of this, this flooding, this that goes back to Harlan Bretz, basically what they've done is they said initially there could have been no flood because Harlan Bretz didn't provide a source for the water. The critics said, well, you're saying that all of this evidence in the landscape is evidence of the flood, but what was the source of the flood? So the critics then said, well, you don't have a source for the flood water, therefore the flood didn't take place. Then as the research evolved, you had independent evidence accumulating in western Montana by J.T. Pardee, who was with the U.S. Geological Survey, and he was investigating evidence that the mountain valleys of western Montana had been filled up with an enormous volume of water. And this volume of water seemed to be exactly the same time as Brett's floods. He then assumed that this was a giant lake, and because we're on the mountainside, you see the shorelines etched, you know, a thousand feet above the valley floor. And what he then decided was that based upon an old uh, 19th century uh, interpretation by T.C. Chamberlain that there had been an ice dam, he said, well, there must have been an ice dam west of here somewhere in the Clark Fork Valley. A giant lake backed up, burst through the ice dam, and then this is what would have caused Harlan Bretz's floods. There's spectacular evidence.